and welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. I thank you again for the love and support on the most recent video. As always, I seriously appreciate it and hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. This video is going to be covering some more news regarding the cryptocurrency space as there's been some major announcements from a very large exchange that many of us use and have come to love over the last several years. Not only that, we've got some big news for Hedera as well coming from the HBAR Foundation and miscellaneous projects built within. First of all though, let's jump in and take a quick look at a market overview. So on the fear and greed index, we can now see we've shot back down into extreme fear at a level of 25. Yesterday, we had a fear indication of 28 and only last week we were at a fear slash neutral territory of 41. As we have seen previously though on this particular metric, um, extreme fear can be a sign that investors are worried, but it could also be a buying opportunity. And of course, when we're in the extreme greed or greed sections of this metric, the market is normally due for a correction. Don't forget as well, this metric is built off the current sentiment for the Bitcoin market and it crunches the numbers into a simple meter from zero to 100, obviously from extreme fear to extreme greed. Data sources are around things like volatility, market momentum, social media survey, surveys, dominance, and trends. And obviously, as we've covered this many times previously, it is sometimes a bit of a lagging indicator when it comes to the markets. Now, regardless, I'm continuing to top up some of my longer term positions as some of those cryptocurrency projects are in a fantastic buying zone for me personally, HBAR being one of them and Quant being another one that I'm looking to add to. Of course, my other interoperability play that I've talked about many times on the channel is of course Link and, or Chainlink. And there are some other positions as well that I'm looking to build like Thor Chain Rune. Stellar Lumens for me is always a good buy with some of the infrastructure that they're pumping out as well as other projects from around the space that we talk about. Not just that as well, other tokens such as the Source token are something that I am very bullish on the long term as that will go hand in hand with the progression that Hedera makes, particularly as we enter the next bull run. I'm going to quickly show you a chart. So I'm just on CoinMarketCap and I'm taking a look at Uniswap, which is the native token for Uniswap, Uni, over on the Ethereum network. Now, of course, Uniswap being pretty much the largest decentralized exchange that currently exists to date. However, you can pick many other examples from around different layer one slash layer zero ecosystems. Take Cake token from PancakeSwap or the Boo token from SpookySwap, which I'll look at in a minute because obviously it's the phantom chain. And that is very similar to what Hedera is, sort of. A um, bit more of a like-for-like -like comparison in terms of market caps, etc. However, what we tend to see, of course, is that when the tokens launch for the platforms, they typically do very well for the first day or so, getting to very egregious uh, sort of evaluate, uh, valuations. And then the subsequent days or weeks, they tend to perform really poorly. A majority of the time, this is because those early seed investors that bought into the project early to help fund the development look to exit their positions as they, as they have made a return and they've already waited potentially months or even years in order to pull out that capital that they initially invested. And that is why you see a slight drawdown or sometimes a very aggressive drawdown of the token prices for these decentralized exchanges. However, though, over time, what you can see is as the chains tend to pick up speed and momentum and those decentralized exchanges gain new attention and customers and roll out more features, the token prices tend to appreciate very substantially from those lows. And it's no different for the source token for source swap at the moment. It's obviously hit a sort of bottomed out valuation somewhere around three cents at the moment, did fall into the mid two cent ranges. Um, a lot of large investors or whales that were stacking NFTs to get those source airdrops, the token airdrops uh, from the early days, have obviously been waiting in upwards of say six months or so in order to sort of exit those positions. They've done so, they've reduced that source token price. And I think me personally, I'm betting on the source token increasing in the future, particularly because the fundamentals and the roadmap from the development team of Source Swap are so damn strong. Not only that, you've obviously got them being the Oracle of the Hedera network, the price oracle for the API sort of data and integrations. And then of course, as well, they're on that DeFi alliance with Headstarter and Stata, for example, that are looking to help better the Hedera ecosystem. These are a team that will be around for a long, long time. And it's something that personally, I'm looking to continue building a position. in. Of course, I was showing you guys way back when how to get those NFTs to get hold of those airdrops. But of course, you can buy the source tokens directly on the exchange. Now, there are videos on my channel showing you guys how to provide liquidity and also swap tokens in a separate video with some tips and tricks to get the best rates. 
you can use that method in order to pick up some source tokens. As I quickly mentioned, taking a look at Spooky Swap, it's got a current market cap of just shy of 19 and a half million pounds. Of course, Spooky Swap being the decentralized exchange on Phantom, which has kind of gone from riches to rags in the reverse order after some of that information came out. And obviously, they had hacks and, and other incidents on the chain. Um, of course, it being somewhat similar, more similar than other layer ones to Hedera. Potentially, we could see something happen like this for the source of swap uh, platform and the source token as the ecosystem of Hedera continues to expand. To put this in perspective at the moment, I think the source market cap is somewhere around, I don't know, say $6 million. Let's just, for the sake of numbers, £5 million. So it's roughly a 4x uh, to get to where Spooky Swap currently is, and that is a rank 583 coin on coin market cap. So you could see somewhere in the region of four to five X increase in the source token price, and that would put a source token round 10 to 11 cents as of the time of recording. So there's potentially four to five X there from the source token over the long term, if obviously you're willing to bear the risk. Of course, make sure you're doing your own financial research. None of this is a financial advice by any means make sure you understand the risks of these types of tokens. Of course, they are very low market cap and have very high amounts of volatility, but it's a play that I'm looking to make personally. If we look at some of the other main news in the markets at the moment, Bitcoin, a bull run starts uh, coming from Aurelian Ohayon. The depth of corrections decreases with time, and this guy is calling the bottom being reached um, based off some different FIB levels by the looks of it. Uh, percentage fib retracements and we can see the bottom here was a 75 percent retracement from that all-time high and what he's effectively trying to draw a relationship between is the previous cycle drawdowns so we can see the drawdown previously was around 94 percent from all-time high to bottom uh, 87 percent from all-time high to bottom in that run in 2016 in 2020 slash 21 we had a couple of different corrections uh, obviously that one being c19 84 percent drawdown which is obviously then lower than previous 80 percent, and then we've just had around a 75 percent drawdown recently obviously going back a couple of months to sort of june time obviously we're having a bit of a correction at the moment some of that momentum dries up and then potentially we will see another move towards the upside as well as some other sort of technicals with people saying there was no way that this was an all-time high we'd seen previously at the end of 2021. It just wasn't large enough. Who knows? No one has a crystal ball. However, unfortunately, that macro uh, sort of negative sentiment for risk-off attitudes is still there. Lots of different economies are facing recessions. You've effectively got a global recession. Many different currencies are taking an absolute battering at the moment. We have supply shortages across the globe as well. So realistically, there is very little faith you can have in majority of these models as to whether things are going to be going in a particular direction. That's why I play the long-term game with dollar cost averaging. I'm not trying to time any of these markets. However, we may see some positive momentum return based on some of these metrics. But of course, as I mentioned in the past, September is not typically a great month for cryptocurrencies. And I don't see why we'd see much difference here. However, that being said, the DYDX did start a parabolic move from May 21st, 2021. And of course, this is the US dollar currency index, and it's the strength of the dollar across a basket of different goods. It now looks like we're in an all-time high for this different uh, metric with a double top forming. Good indicator for stocks, Bitcoin, and crypto assets, as this metric cannot go parabolic forever. This, cur this currency, the, the US dollar, cannot continually rise against all other currencies across the globe. And of course, the US dollar index is effectively measuring the buying power of those different dollars as opposed to it. But not only that, unfortunately, as the dollar tends to increase in value, that hurts exports um, of the United States because it's more expensive to export things. If you're purchasing or converting back to dollars, you don't get as much sort of dollar value for that export. So we may see some fall here and that could be positive uh, reassurance for the remainder of the markets, but we'll have to see how that plays out. Moving into some absolutely phenomenal news, which is a complete game changer again for cryptocurrency adoption and just shows that things are moving at breakneck speeds. MasterCard and their CEO, Mikhail Maybach, has just said that they're working with Binance to let people spend crypto at more than 90 million different stores. And then it follows on from his comments on LinkedIn saying, we can unlock the full potential of blockchain technology when we make it easier to access and easier to use. One way that we'll do this is by bridging or bringing crypto to everyday purchases. 
To make that a reality, we're working with Binance to let people use their crypto to make purchases at 90 million stores that already accept MasterCard and launching this work in Argentina and have plans to expand from there. What could the blockchain industry look like in five years? We're seeing hints of that. So they're obviously piloting this scheme in Argentina. And if we take a quick look, we can see this Binance MasterCard that will be going live over in Argentina. So Binance is partnered with MasterCard to launch a prepaid card in Argentina. Argentinian users with the necessary valid ID can get access to the Binance card. The launch of the product is the vision of the exchange as a part of its global expansion. The new card will allow users to use cryptocurrency for payments at over 90 million MasterCard merchants globally. Using the card, crypto will be converted to fiat currency in real time at the point of purchase. In addition to this, cardholders will also earn 8% crypto cash back on all eligible purchases. So that's an incentive for users uh, of this service. ATM withdrawals will also be free of any charges. Our work with digital currencies builds on our strong foundation to enable choice and peace of mind when people shop and pay. Together with our partners, MasterCard has been leading the payment industry in enabling entry to exciting new worlds. Walter Pimenta, who's the executive VP of MasterCard Latin America. Now, of course, this is very interesting as well because MasterCard naturally has a very large conglomerate uh, business as their main competitor in the market, of course, being Visa. And obviously, they'll be looking to have an edge over Visa in any way, shape or form they possibly can. And it looks like they're potentially turning to the adoption of cryptocurrency in order to gain that edge over Visa themselves. Holders of the Binance card can easily access the card's features and manage it through the dashboard available on the app and website. Other features include payment history and customer support. So really traditional for any type of debit card or prepaid card. The first Latin American country to debut the card is Argentina, and it's emerged as a hub for different crypto cards. Recent months have witnessed almost three local crypto exchanges providing their crypto card services. And of course, Binance being one of the world's major cryptocurrency exchanges, we'll probably see this continue to roll out if this pilot scheme is successful in Argentina. We will hopefully see this roll out to other places around the globe. I'm guessing Argentina Argentina, Argentina is being used as a pilot, obviously Latin America, probably less regulation in place as opposed to say the United Kingdom, Europe or the United States or Canada along those lines. Talking about um, Binance themselves, obviously CZ at the helm, continuing to further the industry by reducing friction wherever possible. And as he said here 22 hours ago, no one's following, so we are in a race to zero with ourselves. Leading is lonely sometimes. Obviously, this is off the back of the announcement that zero fee Ethereum trading will be going live on Binance. They've already had zero fee Bitcoin trading, zero fee to all USD stablecoin pairs and also zero fees for all Binance USD pairs. They are continuing to expand this to some of the largest cryptocurrencies in the sector. And of course, Binance leading the way in terms of helping that adoption become mainstream. Across to some Hedera news then. So we can see Australia is continuing to break records when it comes to adoption for cryptocurrency as well. The second largest bank in Australia is now able to test its stablecoin on the Hedera mainnet. Hedera Heatwave is still alive and kicking. The HBAR Foundation is excited to announce that Open Zeppelin, a recognized leader in Web 3.0 security and auditing, has integrated its defender and contract services, enabling ANZAU, Australia's second largest bank, to secure its A$DC stablecoin on the Hedera network. Open Zeppelin's industry-leading security and auditing capabilities enable the acceleration of development, deployment, and technical operations of Solidity smart contracts on Hedera. As an immediate result of this, ANZ Bank can further test its stablecoin on the low-cost, high-throughput, and carbon-negative Hedera network. ANZ will then evaluate using the Open Zeppelin contract library for secure token and access control templates for further use cases. You can learn more about the partnership in our latest HBAR blog, which is obviously on hbarfoundation.org. But what we can see here is Australia is very serious about a centralized um, or central bank digital currency built on top of Hedera. Obviously, this comes off the back of some of those governing council members and use cases like FPOS. ANZAU has been doing a lot of different stuff utilizing Hedera. And this is just another one of those huge sort of golden egg type use cases built on top of Hedera that could be absolutely game changing for the DLT. Not only that, today is the day of anniversary of the mainnet 
for Hedera. So on this day in 2018, Lehman Baird and Mance Harmon officially launched the Hedera mainnet, privilege of documenting the moment where Hedera became a reality. But we can say four years ago today is the anniversary of the Hedera mainnet going live. And that's four years of continual development that is continually scaling and ramping up as well. Another great tweet uh, for some information from Coinman here. So MTEX platform digitizes access to central banking services. The Bank of Ghana has just gone live and others are in the pipeline. So MTEC Inc. utilizes Hedera Hashgraph uh, on Hedera. So, and we see there Kamel Cadet, who I think is the CEO of MTEC. It's official. Bank of Ghana has gone live on MTEC. Now, MTEC I've covered in videos quite a way back now, but they are a sandbox utilizing Hedera that enable these different central banks to test their central bank digital currencies in a non mainnet environment, so a testnet or sandbox environment prior to them launching. And what we can see now is that it's actually gone live. Um, again, massive news for Hedera, and hopefully we start to see sort of more transactions and adoption continue for Hashgraph itself. Of course, another announcement from Source Swap Labs. These guys never seem to sleep. Another yield farm announcement, again, off the back of the voting, sort of doing some intermediary DAO stuff. But the votes are in. We're excited to announce a Source USDC yield farm. Start earning both HBAR and Source by staking liquidity in this farm by navigating to sourceswap.finance slash liquidity slash supply. Provide liquidity, stake LP tokens, earn yield. And of course, this one should be pretty good um, for impermanent loss. You're only going to get impermanent loss on the side of the Source token, not so much on the USDC token because obviously it should be stable. My video showing you guys how to provide liquidity still applies for this yield farm pair as well. I suggest you guys check that out. I'll try and leave it in a card up in the top right of this video for you guys to go and look at if you are new to Hedera and want to provide liquidity to earn some of those additional rewards. The farming rewards of this pair will probably be pretty high to begin with. USDC is still fairly hard to get hold of on Hedera at the moment, and there is a slight premium for it as a result. Not only that, Source Swap Labs, um, you can submit some questions now for their bi-weekly ask me anything on saturday the 27th of august 7 30 p.m et and that'll be hosted on their discord server they will publish a recording of this afterwards but if you guys have any questions i urge you guys to join their discord server they post a lot of announcements in there as well as well as first views to different things that they are working on it's a great way to interact with the team and get any of your questions or potentially even features that you would like to see answered for the future not only that we can see stada are continuing to develop as well they've just released a poll asking for people's opinions about what Stada should build next on Hedera, HBAR X auto trading vaults, HBAR money markets, and staking for HTS tokens are the three different poll options. I urge you guys to vote because they'll be looking to roll out one of these in the future. But again, it's great to see that Stada are continuing to develop, particularly as we wind down August now and the transition from their accelerated or um, subsidized rewards will come to a close as the transition across to native staking begins to take off throughout September. There will be shifts in APY coming. Of course, I will be doing videos on that as we roll up or wrap up August and move across into that native staking period. Anyway, guys, hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment if you've got something to say. I'll try and get round to as many of them as I possibly can. And until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.